Hello, my name is Maeve Coleman and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Maxim Integrated. Today, I'm going to talk about the non-volatile storage of the Max 20754 and show you a quick demo. So first of all, what is the Max 20754? It is a multi-phase power supply controller. It has a dual output, a PM bus interface and can drive up to six power stage devices. For today's demo, we will use the Max 20754 EV Kit 6. This EV Kit demonstrates the Max 20754 alongside six Max 20766 power stage devices. It is in a four plus two phase configuration. It also uses three coupled inductors. Coupled inductors reduce the effect of inductance value and size without excessive ripple current, and therefore reduce the required output capacitance and improve the transient response. So here is the Max 20754 EV kit. Here's the Max 20754 controller, the six Max 20766 power stage devices, three coupled inductors, there's the PM bus interface and the power jack. To interface this board, to the PC via the PM bus interface, you need the max power tool 002. When plugging this in, make sure the red line goes to the pin one indicator on the board. We can then use a 12 volt wall adapter to power up the board. And we enable the device at S5, the two outputs at S2 and S3. Now, let's take a look at our power tool software. This is available to download from the Maxim website. So here on our dashboard, you can see the two slave addresses for the two outputs of the Max 20754 and all of the basic parameters to go with those addresses. Now, at this point, I'd like to give you a little bit of background on the non-volatile memory structure of these devices. The non-volatile memory is implemented in blocks or units of one time programmable memory and the starting memory quantity is 108 blocks. So to save configuration parameters to the device's memory, the user must click store user all or store default all. Each time the user does this, the device will use one to three blocks of memory, depending on what commands have been written since the last store. So I'll show you an example of this now. We'll go to the PM bus command store. We can see here in our OTP remaining register that we have 96 blocks of remaining memory. Now, if I go and change, say, the output voltage, and click store user all, I'm prompted to turn off my outputs. So I can do so by turning off S2 and S3 on the EV kit. So they're off now, click OK and OK. And now if I go back to my PM bus command store, I can see there are 95 blocks of remaining rem memory. If I want now, I can go back to my configuration tab and click restore maximum all. This puts the device back to the maximum supply defaults. We can see now our output voltage is back to its original value. Another thing to note with these blocks of non-volatile memory is it takes one block of memory if you are storing command changes that affect one rail only, but it takes two blocks of memory if the command changes you make and store are for both rails. So for example, you can see here on the home dashboard, if I change the on delay time to say two for output A and three for output B. And I click store user all. And now if I go back to our PM bus command store, we can see that there is two less as opposed to one 
of our blocks remaining in our one time programmable memory. A final subject I would like to cover before finishing up is the store default all button. This button, similarly to the store user all, takes one to three blocks of memory every time it is used. This option writes the contents of the PM bus memory to the default store rather than the user store. And then both the restore user all and the restore default all buttons load the most recent stored commands from each of their stores to the device when used. So that's all for now. Hopefully you've learned something about the non-volatile storage in the MAX 20754 and you don't use all 108 blocks of one-time programmable memory in one go. For more information, please see the MAX 20754 product page on the Maxim website. Thank you for watching.